Okay, so let's zoom out for a moment. Okay, so this is just kind of the subtopic that we've been in. But as I've been saying, you know, this is part of this much bigger whole. And there are lots of ideas that we've been looking at, which feed into this, and they're going to help you have context for how this is different to physics. Okay, so in mathematics, for instance, as a topic, before we looked at calculus, there was a kind of function that we looked at, which fed into natural growth and decay. What kinds of functions were we looking at? Exponential functions, right? Which, of course, exponentials and logs, they're really two sides of the same coin. So we understood them as their own topic. And then we said, oh, okay, well, let's now have a think about a particular physical example of goes. And that was natural growth and decay. Okay. In rates of change, we did a similar kind of thing. We meant the idea of, broadly speaking, algebraic functions. We've been working with these for years, basically since we learned what algebra was, we learned what algebraic functions were. And that's where we understood rates of change. And we're going to look at those ideas again when we try and relate together displacement and velocity and acceleration. Okay, now, sorry, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, yep. Um, when we have a think about all the other topics, I want you to p contemplate for a second, which other topics have been related to the kinds of ideas we've been looking at at the moment, in particular in rates of change. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so we've got calculus is already um, what our, our pink sort of, you know, you've got calculus in the physical world, okay? Um, there are two main things that are still sort of left off which are going to be looked at, um, which we've already looked at, and we're gonna look at a little further. I think I zoomed out a bit, let me zoom back in. The first one is, remember when we look at rates of change, I talked about objects and they were of particular shapes, right? So for example, you might have a spherical balloon that's inflating, or you have like a, um, a trough of water, which is like a triangular prism. And the shape of what you're dealing with completely defines your rate of change, okay? So obviously geometry, which is a huge field, a huge area of maths before we even got to calculus, that kind of fed into this, and it's also going to feed into this, how the objects move. Okay. And there's one last idea which is going to feed in, which we need for this, which is trigonometry. And um, trigonometry, I suppose you could think of in its connection to um, geometry, but most importantly, it's going to be very important when we understand, number one, these masses and forces. But also, because trigonometry is about, you know, it's about something like this, right? Like this is where it's all born from, yeah? Um, X, Y. What you'll find is whenever you've got an object and it's moving in a particular direction, okay? Any object that's moving in a particular direction, if it's moving in something more complicated than just like up and down or left and right, there's some combination of different things together. You're, you're trying to say, okay, look, there's, um, there's a, whoa, that's much too thick. Um, there's going to be a component that goes in one direction and another one that goes perpendicular to that. And that's some combination of those will give you the direction that you're talking about, okay? So anytime you're trying to resolve different directions, and resolve is actually the important word, whether it's um, you know up, down, left, right, which is projectile motion, or you're going round and round in a circle, which is what we'll look at in circular motion, trigonometry is involved, okay? So these are going to be the pieces outside of calculus that feed into calculus in the physical world and help us understand motion, okay? Now, lastly, <coughs> I've left this to last because people say to me, oh, this is frustrating because this is why I didn't study physics. I didn't study physics when I was at school. And so I found myself very, very confused because there's this huge amount of overlap over here. But physics is completely different. It's a, it's a reason why it's its own subject. And um, I want to try and explain why. So firstly, there's a difference in content. There's a difference in the focus, right? So physics inter is interested in a whole bunch of things that the mathematics of motion is not interested in. For example, um, this word kinematics, right? You might um, think, oh, there's a relationship there to kinetic, right? Which is true. Um, kinetic en energy, potential energy. These are very important ideas in physics, but they don't really have that, all that much relevance to when we're looking at the mathematics of motion, okay? In the same way, you'll have objects that are moving and you, it really matters what those objects are made of in physics, right? Um, the question of matter is kind of fundamental to what physics is. But in, in motion, in mathematics, we don't care what it's made of. We are interested in how it's moving and why it's doing that. Okay, what forces are influencing it? Um, yeah? Um, in terms of when we talk about masses, do we have to consider density? Uh, no. no, no, not really. 
Uh, I mean, you can consider. Yeah, so you can consider that, but you see, I don't need to know an object's... I don't need to understand comprehensively an object's density in order to understand the medium around it and how heavy it is, right? That's all that's interested. That's all I'm interested in, okay? Uh, one last idea that really matters in physics that um, in motion we don't really worry about, which is space. Now, I don't mean space as in like astronomy space, and I don't mean space as in like geometric space. I mean like space as in space time, okay? Now, the nature of space and space time is something that obviously is very important to physics, and we're not worried about in motion. Okay. So you can see, despite the huge overlap, these are very different beasts. Now, there's one thing that I've left off. You notice this green thing up here in the corner, which I've sort of dotted because it's kind of important to us, not that much because it's sort of in the background. That's the question of um, how do you know? How do you work things out in this field, right? Uh, we call this epistemology. It's the study of how you know things, right? <laughs> now, anyone who's had any thinking about um, philosophy or even in English, you'll, have a th you'll, you'll understand uh, epistemological frameworks is the way we say it, okay? How do you know something is true in physics versus in mathematics? Well, physics is a science. Right? It's an experimental science. So the way you know things is you try them out, you do them over and over again, and you make observations. That's the way things work in physics. That's how we know things in physics. That's why we build large hadron colliders underneath the ground. That's why we put telescopes in space, because we need to see these things and we need to understand what's going on. Okay? Now, Remember I said to you, oh, these, this is kind of a broad oversimplification. Obviously, in mathematics, we experiment as well. We try things out. We hypothesize. We see, okay, we have an idea. Can we test it out? Can we see whether it works or not? But fundamentally, like the DNA of mathematics is not about experimentation or observ observation. You can't prove something by exhaustion of mathematics. That's no proof. I don't care if you've seen it a billion times. I only need to find one contradiction and the whole thing falls to pieces. Mathematics reasons things out and, and knows things differently. We use logic and argument. That's how we know things. All you need is imagination to be a mathematician. No apparatus required. You just need this and this and off you go. 